Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. We have another session now uh, to help Eve uh, to learn to transition smoothly, arc properly, and be soft and light for the cutting and roping work she's going to be doing here as our urban weekend cutter and roper prospect. So here we are on our track, which doesn't have fences on the outsides. There is uh, a path on our driveway that has sand. We're asking Eve in this openness to give us the right posture and the right the correct transitions and to keep her soft. We've done it now with Sammy and Sadie and we've shown you. Sadie is Eve's daughter. Uh, we're doing it with Eve, who is my biggest Morgan and probably gonna be my roping horse. She's real upheaded now. And the reason is because she's out in the open. We've got to get our three Morgans to be willing to do this kind of Western work, cow work, work, anywhere, not just in the arena. We've got the double reins on Eve because she tends to be more upheaded than the other two Morgans. Uh, and those double reins apply no pressure if her head is in the right place, uh, but they apply a nice, even, controllable pressure by the rider if the rider wants to pick up the reins that are just sitting on Eve's neck right now. We basically are using the riding reins, but we have the double reins in case we need to remind Eve that we want break at the pole and flexion in the neck. Now, Eve is going around this fenced area, which is manure bins and chicken pen. She's at a nice trot now. She's showing more vertical flexion now. She's still upheaded, which I don't mind, as long as they're soft and light. If Katie can pick up a canter around this track, then we have De determine that the way to find out if you really have softness and the way to slow them down easily is to arrive at this corner of the track and with the proper flexion ask the horse to do a small takeoff circle from the big circle. We'll see if Eve can do it. If she's not ready for it, that's okay. Repetition will help her to realize. There you go that she needs to stay light. And Katie needs to stay in the center of the saddle. Craig Cameron on RFD TV just did a program today uh, all about learning to canter. And the rider has to be very, very careful to stay centered. There should be a line from the back of the head, the back of the shoulder, the back of the hips, in the back of the foot. And if you have to reach forward with your reins, you want to make sure you don't tilt your shoulders or your torso. The horses really can feel that and it can really affect their softness, lightness, and smoothness of transitions. So Katie is especially keeping those uh, characteristics of good riding in mind also, not too much weight in the stirrups. The stirrups are just supposed to be a place to put your feet. But too much weight in the stirrups or standing up in the stirrups or leaning forward can be really counterproductive in maintaining softness and lightness at the three gates. Oh, she's looking much better. Very nice.
Katie just said something, but I'm not sure what she said. We'll see if she can repeat it before we finish this show. We don't have mics on today. We're using the camera mics. We'll just leave it up to her, depending upon how she feels, whether she wants to go into a canter. Would you like to stay at a trot today? Um, oh. It may be too much to ask you to canter around yeah, here. I don't she was better at trotting last time we rode her. She's picking up her pace, coming around right here. Okay. Um, and kind of throwing her head up, so. Okay, there's usually a reason for that. And as the rider or the handler, you need to see the world the way they see it. There's I think it's coming around, she sees this open track. Either that or maybe the camera? Or maybe the camera. Maybe the camera. Then let's just stay at a trot today. We don't want to start yanking on her mouth. Have you done it both directions? No. 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 Okay, let's go the other direction at a walk and a jog. Let's see if she still tends to pick up pace and get stressed here at this corner. Oftentimes in an arena, the horse will do just that when they approach a gate, which they know will take them out of the arena. So what is Eve seeing at this corner? It's the southeast corner of the chicken pen that was consistently making her be stressed or at least another notch up in energy when in fact we want softness. Look at her head is down, nice, nice walk. She does have a nice flat walk and she is going out on a trail ride after this. We constantly take our horses on trail rides, short ones, to keep reminding them that there's a world out there. There's a world out there that isn't made up of a bunch of vinyl fences, sanded tracks, arenas, etc. She's looking. She looks nice and calm. Yeah, she didn't get all stressed at that corner. Let's see what happens the second time around. There, so there's something she's seeing going this way, going towards the east that she's not seeing in the clockwise direction. Very nice, Eve. Yes, very nice. We don't want to do the candor today, although I'm real curious how hard or soft she will be because I want to stop on a good note. This is our note of resolution. See how nice Eve is jogging in the wide open spaces. And that's all for today. Our next session with Eve. Last time we didn't want to try a canter because she was doing so well at the walk and jog. So today we're trying the canter, but she is rushing a bit. Yeah, she's just Katie's trying to sit in the center of the saddle, trying to put her weight in the, the bottom of her foot. Now nah, she's too, too chargy. Let's br bring it back down to a jog. Whether or not there are fences, we want her to give us the right speed and smooth transitions. But you know what? She's vertically flexed. She's, she's just... She's just a powerhouse. I wouldn't even try the small circle here. Not at that speed. We'll work some more in the fence area where we can ask for a canter on the whole arena perimeter and then cut the pre perimeter in half and ask her to veer off the path along the whole fence and do a small circle. But see how she's Throwing her head up, you can see she's just much, going much too fast. Can you come back down to a jog? Will she? Yes. Ah, but her head's up, her eyes are bulgy. What happens when you try it the other direction? Katie, when you come back around, let me know. I don't even know if we want to try the other direction today because even at a jog, that other direction was a problem yesterday. Did you try the other direction yet? Is it any better, any worse? I haven't tried it yet. Try it. Let's see what happens. Don't try to do the small circle. 
Again, this is just documenting her present prerequisite skill in smooth transitions, soft body posture, and speed control. So here she comes. She'll be coming the other direction at this corner here, which is the uh, south east corner, she tended to look behind us, which is a bigger open space, and it seemed to make her even more stressed when we did this with her last time at just the walk and the jog. Let's see if that happens this time. We've got the camera about the same position. We weren't sure if it was the camera that was stressing her as she came down that south fence line of the chicken pen, or just the background, which is a lot more open, keeping hands down at the, sa the front of the saddle. Try to keep your hands, yeah, in the box in front of the horn of the saddle. Even if you move uh, a, one hand forward, you might tend to tilt your shoulder, which will be per She's still speeding up. You, are, you, are you worried about picking up a canner? I'll try it, but it's not going to be good. Okay, she's going to try it just to document where Eva's at. Well, I'm going to keep watching RFD programs, both on video on demand and live. Uh, keep uh, trying to find clues how to slow down this canner. Because there are a lot of programs on it, but each horse has is different buttons to push. So she picked up the canner. Again, she's a powerhouse. Okay, slow down, slow down, dot down to a trot. She's still cantering. I'm not sure why. Maybe she didn't hear me, or maybe she's feeling that Eve knows what she's doing now, that she's not so stressed. Okay, did you not slow to a trot because she wouldn't? She wouldn't. She wouldn't. <laughs> okay, all right. There we are. There's our prerequisite skill. Now we're going to set the camera up in the arena, not to work on jog or canter, uh, but to work on over the haunches with our two cutting machines requiring Eve to follow a moving object around a corner. We have enough team members today that we can run the camera, ride the horse, and operate those two cutting machines and uh, get some idea how good Eve is going to be about doing that exercise, which we've done in the past with my best cow horse, Semi, and it went quite well. Now we're in our uh, uncovered arena Back. and we're set up with Back. somebody to operate this moving uh, cow simulator and let me show you as he moves it. I'm going to point to it with my arm extension. It's a animal like looking piece of cloth. Let's go back again and you can practice with Eve. We just want to do things slowly with Eve. We want her to move over her haunches but look she got all upset in her mouth. We just want her to realize what the right answer is here. Give her slow practice in over the haunches work. So do that for a few minutes, Everett and Katie. And we have Eve much closer to the moving object than we normally would in a real uh, yeah, cutting situation because we want her to see it very clearly through the fences. Now over here is our newer cow simulator. And it runs along the length of my arena. Can you move it, Angela? And watch it move. It's just a little doll hanging on a cable. OK, and we're only using half the arena and back again. Here's the doll. Good. OK, hold on. And the reason we have two is uh, twofold. One is that this is the shorter run is good for a beginning horse. The longer run is good for picking up speed for advanced cutting practice. And the two together give us an opportunity to have the horse practice moving after a moving object that goes around a corner. Because when you think about it, a cow 
often we'll go in straight lines back and forth, but sometimes we'll go around a corner. So we have to try to simulate that movement and give our ranch versatile horses practice with these training simulators. That means that Eve has to understand when this simulator stops moving here and that one starts moving there, that the right answer from her is to follow that one. Coming back around the corner, pick this one up again. So we really have to coordinate all of our cow simulator operators. Uh, the one over there is done with an extra cycle. The one over here is done with a unicycle. We're just trying to make do here in our weekend cutter and roper series at Shadrack Farms, which is in an urban rural setting. And we try to do things economically here. And uh, we're not mine ready made training devices, we're making them ourselves. So this is uh, our uh, most recent uh, effort to show you how we practice cutting here. And even though Eve is going to be my rope horse, because she's my biggest, most powerful horse, and I recently did a show about using our roping cow simulator machines, uh, I also want her to know how to work with cutting a cow, especially as a turnback horse. Okay, so now I'm going to move off to the side, and we're going to watch Who? Katie giving Eve some stress-free practice around her haunches, 180 degrees, good, she's biting it a bit, a little bit. Notice she has her cavallos on because we like to put them on. All my Morgans are, uh, do not have shoes on, but we use the cavallos in the front legs when we're doing uh, any kind of training where there's movement. And now Katie has her spurs on, and Eve is very, very sensitive to leg pressure. We try to use the spurs and even the leg pressure as little as possible. Good. So she stops. Okay, yeah. get her collected and vertical flexion around, around, around. Good, good. She seems to be calming down a little bit, still biting at her bit a little bit, but doing quite well. Another couple times, mm -hmm. and this time, Everett, if you'll stop in the middle rather than coming all the way to the unicycle, that will make Eve realize, with Katie's help, that she's to rate mm -hmm. this moving object. And when it slows down and stops, she has to slow down and stop. It's her job. Mm -hmm. And see how... Katie is sitting in the saddle in a uh, balanced position with her shoulders and her hips and the back of her boots in a line. Back. See how she's asking Eve? Ve oh, very nice, very nice to come all the way out around 180. Now, when you get to that mm -hmm. end, ever to the cone, you stop and Katie is going to keep going toward the south fence, and Angela, you're going to start yours, okay? Now, E will see that, oh, there's another moving object. Yes, yes, the, the right answer is to follow both moving objects and stop. Then 180 degrees around. Not, not bad, not bad. She's biting at the bit a little bit. This was, oh, wait a minute now. What are the rules here? She really wants to understand. She doesn't want to be afraid. Okay, now let's go back and forth with that cutting machine a little bit until Eve understands that that little moving object, even though it's kind of hard to see, you can see it. The horses can see it, we can see it through the fence, above the fence. We can go much faster, and when we're ready, we'll remove these panels they're on wheels it'll be easy to roll them up against Back. the perimeter fence and we'll Back. use the whole run which means not with Eve though not yet which means we can pick up a canner easily Ooh. good she's much more relaxed now Ooh. how does she feel to you Katie she's very relaxed very relaxed okay let's go back and forth back to the mirrors and then back towards Angela and when Angela stops that cow simulator, Ooh. Everett will start the one that we started with and go towards the unicycle. And Eve will understand because Katie will look at it and start following it. 
Good. And Katie, if you're okay, let's have let Everett choose a pattern that's random. And we'll okay. see if Eve will follow it. Back. If she'll understand Back. that it's her job to follow this moving object no matter which way it goes. Good. Good. It stopped and yet it went on. And don't cows do that sometimes? Oh. Around and around and around. Good. Good. And as we oh. advance in this skill, we'll pick up speed with Eve. Nice. Nice. She's watching. She looks light. Oh. Very nice. Easy. Okay, so when Easy. you come back to the cone, Everett, Easy. and Angela, Angela, you pick it up, oh. and Katie will show Eve with her body language, with slight rain, slight leg pressure, that now we're done following that moving object, you need to follow the moving object that's in front of you, around the corner. Katie's looking at it, so Eve is looking at it. Nice. Ooh, beautiful. I'm almost ready to quit. I'm almost finding a moment of resolution here. A couple more times with Angela's. Oh, you want to move on? Okay. That's fine. This is like a random pattern. When Katie just looks at the moving object, Eve will understand that now it's her job to look at it and move with it. And Angela and Everett, just watch Katie's eyes. If Katie looks at you, that means she oh. wants you to move your simulator. Back. That way, Back. we won't give Eve any cues other than oh. Katie's body language. Oh. And we'll help Eve to understand that she's to follow the moving object when she's oh. parallel to it. Uh, uh, uh. Back, back. Very nice. When you're ready, go to the oh. other cow simulator by just looking at the operator. Good. And now Eve understands. Uh oh, it's this moving object Easy. that I'm supposed to follow. Easy. And ever give her a Easy. random pattern? Easy. Oh, back, back. Nice. Oh. Very nice. I'm not seeing any biting of the bit. So when you feel you can stop, let's stop oh. on our moment of resolution. When she's soft and light, arc correctly. I always want the eyeball on the cow side to be looking at the cow. Keep going. Easy. Easy. When Katie's ready, she'll ask for a Easy. hoe and c get off the saddle. Oh. Oh. Good girl. Okay. She's getting praise. Eva's getting praise. And she knows it. She knows when she gives us the right answer because we always remove the pressure and we always give her praise. And that's all for today. Sonia Sokolo, uh -huh. the Urban Cowgirl. Here's our next session with Eve. We're in the arena. It's uh, deep sand, compressed, somewhat compressed. We're letting her run, even though we're asking for a slow canner. And here's the reason. Doing a Google search on methods to slow the canner, I found this idea. And based on what I know about Eve, we're going to try it, and it's going to take repetition. My trainer told me the way to teach her to slow down is to let her run. I was baffled. So for about a month, I only rode her in the indoor arena by myself and with my trainer, of course. When I asked for the lope, 
I knew she was going to just take off. My trainer said not to interfere with her. Don't pull, don't anything. Just go for the ride. When she starts to tire out and normally slow herself down, that's when my trainer told me to kick her and make her go. It's almost like, you know, ask them to do the opposite of what they want to do. I've heard that as a training tip many times by the natural horsemanship, by the way. You don't want to kick her and make her go uh, hard, but definitely start making her move faster and move and more forward. After a couple minutes of me making her run, then I would ask for the jog again. This taught the mare that she was the only one forcing herself to gallop, not me. It's kind of a mind game. Horses only will give you as much as you ask for. They are naturally lazy and will always take the easy way out. Once she figured out I wasn't asking for the gallop, she was happy to slow lope around all day long. I know this is a Western take on this, but the horse's brain works the way, the same way, regardless of what saddle you are riding in. So, okay, we're going to be doing a lot of repetition with Firecrest Easter Eve. Doesn't seem to be hard to ride her forceful lope, gallop. Here in the arena, she seems to uh, be relatively relaxed other than speed. She doesn't seem to be spooking at things. So that's what we're going to do in both directions for as much repetition as it takes to get Eve to decide herself to slow down and give us a nice, soft, light canter. And after each such session, we're going to take her out to a comfortable trail ride, short but comfortable, and give her a reward. Then maybe we can feel comfortable taking her back out to our chicken pen area. Chicken pen and manure bin fencing that has a track that we use for fenceless work with our Morgans because they are ranch versatile and they need to know how to do things both in the arena and out the arena, both on sand and on turf, in trails, on trails, and right here at Shadrack Farms. Can you bring her down to a jog now? In our last session, when she was asked to do the job of following the moving objects, which are simulated cows here on my south and east fence of my arena, she was really good. Uh, she wasn't stressed at all, and look at that nice jog. She just doesn't understand yet. It's not clear in her mind that when we ask for a canner, it's not a gallop. See more at www.urbancowgirlchannel.com